I'm sure we're selling people on this whole RV in Europe thing. Quite frankly, we look like a hot mess right now. I promise you that this is not as chaotic as it looks right now. And if you're not working and or not schooling, this is going to be so easy for you. Before we started world tanning, we thought we were pretty adventurous with our vacations. And we pushed our kids to do things that made them feel independent and empowered. But in general, our life was safe and somewhat predictable. It was not until we started traveling full time that we realized how much our ability to cope with the uncomfortable and unknown would be up to the test. As we continue on this journey of ours, we find ourselves breaking barriers everywhere we go. <coughs> oh boy. I think on this speed run to Estonia, I might need to see a doctor. Oh, automatic door, I love that. Good morning from uh, Lithuania. We have basically left, oh my gosh, that's just, I just kicked that thing. You wanna start again, huh? No, okay, good morning, good morning from, from Lithuania. Vietnam! No, it's not in Vietnam. We have left the comforts of Vilnius. Viet, what, what town was that? What? Vil Vilnius. We've left Vilnius last night and we drove about, I don't know, an hour until we said we can't go any further. So we have done something that, well, we've done something that we said that we were never gonna do ever in an RV. We've done a lot of things like that. We're crazy. <laughs> we're breaking rules left and right. We said that we were never gonna sleep in a rest stop on the side of a highway. <laughs> And we said that because we've heard all these like massive rumors, and we've talked about this before, how sometimes people get reportedly gassed at rest stops. Well, here in Lithuania, we stopped at one because all the reports we've heard were in France. So we're, we're justified by saying that this is Lithuania, this is not France. And did you hear the big what? Because the kids were both totally exhausted when we got here last night and they didn't notice that we parked right beside like 20 18 wheelers now the gassing from what i understand by the gassing it's actually not the 18 wheeler drivers that are doing it it's someone that comes into these rest stops where there's five or six rvs lined up and goes and gasses them all in their pipes so we parked away from everyone else at the gas station and i said we we're safe head. we did that's I, called common sense i guess something stuck no it's tooth. called desperation we were tired we were exhausted and there's no the place kids to sleep. didn't notice so look guys we survived but we parked like basically like, right in front of the gas station window so and will went in and asked I has anyone asked, ever been gassed here and she said no it's perfectly safe nothing's <laughs> ever happened here we took her word and we're still we're here, here today. So Listen, so no nice. one dies. First of all, I want to preface this by saying no one has, at least that we know, has died from the gas. And what happens is they gas you, you sleep heavier, they break into your door, rob you, and you wake up in the morning, you have no clue what's happened. So, so essentially, if we leave just like Lordwood Avalon by the door, they're just taking them, and that's okay. We can deal with that. Hey! <laughs> In the meantime, we are basically just moving bags. Every night since, well, since we started these daily vlogs, and it sort of, uh, it went like along the same day, we were already packed for the US. So for the last like 10, 11 days, we've been moving bags back and forth between beds and couch and seats and over here because that's the only way we can get this bed down up top. So every night, Boss, every morning. disclaimer. I have to say that I was the only one that has already packed clothing. Mom and dad packed stuff to send back. Thank we you. don't have enough room for her clothing, Largo. Daddy and I are not going to bring clothing. And this takes up like about 10, 15 minutes each day, sort of as a sequence, which we only have four days left, right? Four days. Wait. Two, one, two, three, four. four days. Four days left, and then we're on the plane. <laughs> So if you're asking yourself, why do you guys have so many bags? You're minimalist, you live in an RV, don't you travel simple? Don't you promote traveling simple? We actually do. Will and I can travel on probably just a backpack um, and maybe a little carry-on. The problem is we have a lot of stuff in the RV that we don't want to get rid of, but it's not appropriate for Asia, like winter coats, stuff like that, um, we, that we would never use there. And we wanna bring some stuff back we're gonna use for Asia because this is our last trip to the US before we move to Asia in early 2020. Aren't you glad that we packed while we were in the Airbnb? I'm glad. And we're not doing it now? I am glad I'm glad that, that we don't have it as a nuisance in our life at this moment. 
So this is the fun thing about the daily vlogs. You don't typically see this stuff with us and I think it's really important because this gives you a deeper look into world tanning. Like it's not all adventures and meeting cool people and, and snuggling on beaches with the kids. There's kind of junk like this, like packing and what do we keep and what don't we keep and lots of planning and so- I if, know we don't keep mom. We don't keep mom. Lago, you're so charming. Thank I love you so much. <laughs> 11, it's a cool Suddenly. age. From a dream, now here's reality Baby, baby, you are really hurting me Cause every time you tell me I'm good and bad, I'm doing fine And so today's adventure is taking us to northern Latvia. There is a place that is called the Hill of Crosses. It is a location of like, it's a pilgrimage location. And people go there from all over Latvia and I think like all over the Baltic region and they go there to go ahead and pray for peace. It is supposed to be amazing. It's supposed to be like crosses all over the place. So it is basically between Vilnius, the capital of Latvia, and Riga. It's like a little bit out of the way, but we figured if we were gonna go ahead and do this route, might as well see something along the way because we're doing these countries way too fast. And so we wanna at least squeeze something that we can say that we saw and that we can sort of not regret while we do this adventure, look back on what we did and did not do. And beyond the crosses, we have an extra special surprise for you guys today. We do. We're super excited. We're super excited, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Share this with you. yeah. You're I don't know what it is. To do drum rolling background, drum roll, laundry. I think they want to know. I can't believe it. Do you guys want to know how we wash our clothes? I, I, you know what? Let's just talk about how we put on our pants, too. This is a daily vlog, and you guys get the realities of it. This is what some days look like. Right. Driving, schooling, get laundry. Get back to driving. Go get back, back to, to driving. driving. Okay. Right. If there's something Jessica's a sucker for, it, it's an amazing bed of flowers on the side of the road. For her, that's more picturesque than any Ansel Adams type backdrop. How about a selfie? How about a selfie? You want to do a selfie? Yeah. Come over here. We've taken a stop on the road to capture sunflowers. We've stopped walking along the Camino to record in crops. And just recently, we stopped for, dare I admit it, a cute blue church. All right, so this is a good time for a question in the vlog. Have you ever stopped to get an image of a church like that? Um, in the middle of the Ukraine. <laughs> in this case, there was another first. It wasn't just simply stopping for a flower shot. That would be easy. But sitting on top of the RV for the shot, this one had me particularly freaked out. What's going on up there, Laura? Mm. I am currently on the roof. Now, we don't usually go on the roof, but oh right- Oh my gosh. What? This is my first time on the roof. No, don't stand, don't stand. Why would we stand? Because We're just sitting. Can we stand? No. Back to you. Jessica has essentially lost her mind at this point. We have, we've been living for the last couple of weeks saying, well, we gotta hurry up, we gotta hurry up, we gotta hurry up. And you know, everything we do is kind of not hurrying up because we, there's things we don't wanna miss. These flowers that we're seeing over here, they've been like the, the joy, the spark of Jessica's imagination for the last, I don't know, 2,000 kilometers. And every time we pass by one, she goes, oh, I'd love to take a picture with lemonade right here. She's basically just pulled over right now. We're stopped in the middle of the road. It's it's a dirt road. It's not a busy road. And now the kids are standing or sitting or hopefully respecting the roof. They're, but they're on the roof of the RV so, so that Jessica can take her perfect shot. See it over there? That's Jessica way over there. There are the kids on the RV. Guys, we gotta sell this one day. Don't kill the roof. You see, I am not a, I'm not generally a nervous guy, but when I see stuff like that, and I've seen roofs that have sort of collapsed or sort of become bad and sort of become deteriorated, and I see dollar signs, I become a little nervous. Oh my gosh, they're standing up. I. Uh... So have you exercised the demons of all these flowers that they finally sort of 
<laughs> you feel like this at this point that there is no reason why to go ahead and feel like you need another photo? We have seen these flowers for about five countries and every time we're driving through them it is this crappy like noon lighting and every time I say well I'm gonna wait till the lighting's better and this time I just said I'm just taking the shot because I don't know when they're gonna go away we've been blessed to have them for five countries now I'm just making the best I can with this shot and I love these flowers and I don't even know what they are. How does it feel to be on the roof? Awesome. I'm, I'm so sad we didn't get here like a lot, much more. I love it up here. Can we go now? <laughs> we can go. No, Those things that done. give off this that's, yellow uh, paint. So now I'm eight. black and yellow for the day. Okay. And back there. Largo's got to class. We actually missed one. Whoa, someone had to close. <laughs> so says the uh, Oh my gosh. Point, point, point. That works out really well. So we decided that it was finally time to make it to our adventure, the Hill of Crosses. The insane part was that those really pretty flowers that were all over the place, we were still running into them at the parking lot. Vegetarian lunch. So we've now arrived at the Hill of Crosses and we're not sort of eager to jump out right away because we're starving, so we're having lunch. However, what we're realizing is right in front of the RV, there's like a group of tourists. There's a big bus I just let go and they're all, they all have the same idea that we had with regards to the flowers. Check out all these people. <laughs> and yes, of course. Excuse me. Oh my, what are they doing right in front of the RV? They are. <laughs> they heard World Townings here. They're coming to visit us. Alright. What do we have here, Largo? Avalon. In a big box. What's in this big box, Avalon? Avalon, are you there? Retrieved from the dumpster, remember what? Oh, that's the dumpster box. I'm watching a movie, leave me alone. What is that, like a virtual reality box? My movie theater. Okay. We are just about to enter Frieza Kallis. Which is known as the Hill of Crosses, the site where over 200,000... Is that your number? That is my Where'd number. Crosses are buried and or are standing. Well, the last website said 200,000. That was like a year ago. So I'm going to count on the fact there's a lot more now than there were back Will then. Will and I are going to try and count every single cross in there. And this is going to be our longest vlog ever. <laughs> Would you, how do they get that number though? Who would want that job? I hear that they're buried on top of each other. Like, I'm sure there's do they some dig guy up out or? there who's figured this thing out. He's a cross counter. That is, <laughs> I wonder how much that pays. <laughs> So this place is a cultural heritage site. This place is also this place is also a place for pilgrimages. People come here. Pope John Paul came here and called this a spiritual site. People come here and basically put crosses on the ground daily. And look right here. You don't have to make your own wooden cross in your car or anything like that. They have them here for purchase. So you can get them for. Let's see. This one's two euros. This one's two, this one's two euros. It's quite a difference in size. I wonder why. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe the angel, you pay more for the angel. I kind of like the heart. What do you think, Will? I like over the heart. I have to be honest. I'm not much of an amber person, but I do appreciate the artistry of it. Ah, this is more my style. Ward off the evil. Thank you. Thank you. Basically, see, so you don't like amber, but at this point, what do you have around your neck? It's not for me. I'm that shopping for our patrons shopping. who get a delivery from us each month, and I think these are stunning, so I'm gonna buy a couple. It's not for me. <laughs> now, no one really knows how these crosses and this kind of cross movement started. But there are many different theories and one of them is is they started appearing after the 1831 uprise against Russian rule and what happened was those who had no place to bury their bodies would put a cross here in honor of them. Oh, 
Another legend states that there was a Lithuanian farmer who had a very ill daughter. And one night he went to sleep and he, in a dream, a woman with a white cloth came to him and she said, you must build or construct a wooden cross and you must plant it on a hill someplace. So the farmer did that and in a couple of days, his daughter was much healthier and was void of being ill. And everyone wanted to jump in on the action. They started planting crosses here. Is that what happened? Yep, and just like that, there's, cl there's crosses everywhere. It's definitely bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I mean, it is only a hill, but there's a lot of crosses here, a lot. There's like a cross with a cross on top of it, with a cross on top of it, with a cross on top of it. I think there's someone here selling double-sided tape. <laughs> Probably in Sharpies, because there are stuff, there's stuff written on some of them too. Now, when this country became part of the Soviet Union in the 1940s, they took down this entire place. They bulldozed it down, they burned it down, and this place became no more. It was just a pile of rubble. Still, even to that date, people still came here while this was under Soviet control. They still built it up and there were still more crosses coming. Three more times the Soviets had to come in and sort of take everything down here. People were risking their lives just to show their devotion or to show their, their faith and their, their sort of their hope and sincerity that the times would change. I'm, I'm really drawn with the creativity. Like, you know, some of them are obviously gift shop purchases like ours. And then this one looks like it was made out of clay. Um, this almost looks like a Christmas tree here, doesn't it? Like someone made a cross out of a bunch of wrought iron and then other people have hung crosses on them. There's a lot of artistry to how people have constructed their own crosses and then how they've hung them. I mean, I think it's really interesting to see the patterns they've hung them in and everyone's just kind of randomly placed theirs, but then it forms a unit together, which is really quite neat. Look at this one. This one's massive. Not just that, but this place is all run by volunteers too, which is pretty, pretty unique. And no one claims ownership of it, I read online. So it's not the property of one particular company, organization, or anything like that, which I think is really beautiful. Everyone can come here. Argo, Suero, Lego. Oh, you're funny. Can I write something? <laughs> right? Love book, book, book nerd. Avalon's a great. So with, with the cross that we purchased, we're basically, we're going a little bit off the beaten path on here. We're going off the main thoroughfare. It's kind of how we live our life. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and we want to sort of just lay one down right, I don't know, I guess it's a good spot. This looks like a good spot. We're not really, our life, our family, we've always lived a very simple life. We don't practice a religion, per se. I think we practice kindness as, as our religion. That's our religion, I think, yeah. And so with this cross that we have here, we basically, we're laying it down in memory of all those people who we, we shared times with on the Camino for family members who were, who were quite devout yeah. in their religion. We and have a lot of people in our life who um, are, are religious and even though it's not our path in life, um, we support their choice to practice whatever makes them happy. So this is for all of you guys, as well as like Will said, our Camino buddies. Um, and it's so. for, for the spirit of world towning. So anyone wants to become a world towner? Yeah. Uh, you know, this is sort of a spiritual thing for you guys too. And I think like I picked the one with the heart um, because I think it's really important that we spread love to everyone. Um, you know, even if we have differences, whatever the differences may be, if they're religious, if they're political, um, if whatever they are, you know, I think it's really important to, to learn from others and makes, um, you know, love everyone. So I'm gonna put our cross down. And our cross kind of has a bum stick thing in it, so I don't know if it's going to stick up, but we'll try. Okay. Oh, oh no! Ah, it didn't stay up, Will. And I lost the thing. Okay, well, let's do this. Let's work with someone else to support us. Ah, there we go. It looks beautiful. It looks nice. All right. Smile!
Smile! You think it's smiling at you? It's smiling. Smiling. There we go. It's you beautiful. Go? I'm ready. Let's roll. This is pretty. This is nice. It's beautiful. It's quite peaceful here, too. It's very relaxing. Now we got to get back in the RV and drive to Latvia. We have laundry to do. Oh, and laundry. Oh. Well, it was nice while it lasted. So with that, we are leaving Lithuania. We have done all that we have time to do in this country. Lithuania, you are Bummer. you're an interesting little country. Yeah, we've quite enjoyed our time. We're going to have to come back for another visit that lasts more than 24 hours. Yeah, I know, well, that's the problem. I mean, but everything we've seen, guys, you, you definitely defy what we thought a post-Soviet country would be like. So. Yeah, you've got good roads, which is always a plus. Good food, nice people. Um, do we have any complaints? I don't think we have any complaints. I don't know. We didn't eat enough food to have any complaints. Yeah, so we, we are all. now heading down to Latvia and where we hear the gas is cheaper. That's really? pretty much, yeah, gas is well, cheaper. Well, it's always about the gas. It's always about the gas. I'm, I'm going to milk this tank dry. Until Show me Latvia. the food. They say that what does not kill us makes us stronger. And for the most part, that's a true statement, barring your occasional panic attack. The important thing is to take that leap and believe that things will work out in the end. Even when you're driving on fumes as you're waiting for the border. We're in Latvia! European country number... Number... We have uh, Estonia, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Nor Denmark, Netherlands, Luxembourg. Seven left! Which means like 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, but this whole area looks very closed. Oh, there it is, there it is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And... Look at that closed speed clean. There'll be no clean clothes today. There'll be clean clothes tomorrow. Okay. That, I think, wraps up today. We've done... We've done a lot. Tomorrow morning we're gonna wake up, probably like right here. We're gonna start the day with laundry. What else would you do in a brand new country but do laundry? All right, with that, we're done. We'll see you guys next time, and thanks for keeping up with us. Bye. In the next episode of World Towning, we finally get that laundry done and then take a little stock of our journey so far. That we're not really a travel vlog because Will and I don't kind of, with the kids, jump from site to site and, and document it to share with the world. Our goal is really to show all of you what it's like to World Town, which is, is really living and changing the world one hometown at a time. And if you're not yet subscribed, be sure to hit that red button and join us on this amazing journey of full-time travel. How'd the, how'd the roosters treat you over there? They gotta be some food. I know, the roosters, the dogs. We've been lucky. We haven't gotten bit by a dog doing this whole RV thing. But we did get broken into though. That's true. I'd rather have a dog bite. I, me too.